beautiful East Tennessee evening. I washed the bike up today, decided I'd do a follow-up video. This is my 2004 Honda Shadow Sabre 1100. Um, I've had this bike for about a year now. Um, beautiful bike. It's one of the nicest bikes I've had as far as riding. Has such good street manners. It rides so smooth. Um, runs so nice. Um, I remember, I don't know if you remember or not, but in my first video, I said since it was such good condition, I wouldn't be doing much riding. Um, but I ended up riding it quite a bit for me. So right now it has about 16,000 miles on it, almost 17,000. So I've put about 4,000 miles on it in a year. So it's, I did quite a bit of riding. Um, I pulled the carburetors out since last video, cleaned those out. A um, little sputter at idle. Uh, most carbureted bikes do um, it's an easy issue to avoid so anytime these bikes you know I read a lot of the forums the guys are like well it idles bad but when I lay on the gas um, it runs fine what that is nine times out of ten just from working on these bikes forever it's your pilot jets so very small holes in those little pilot jets um, so you have to pull the carb and clean them out um, it, while you're in there you may as well replace them and do a whole rebuild kit um, if you want to go cheap, you could take them out and just clean everything really good. Um, I'm sure that would work fine as well. But I just took it out, ran a whole rebuild kit on it, and uh, purrs like a kitten. Now, there's ways to avoid that. Um, what I would recommend, all of my bikes I've always ran 100% ran gas. Stay away from anything with ethanol in it. Um, I know guys will be like, well, I've run regular gas in it. You know, I don't have any problems with my bikes. And, it, and that's true in a lot of cases. Um, fuel injected bikes, you don't have much to worry about. But in these carb bikes, if you ride them every day, um, yeah, you probably won't have any problems. If you ride them a lot, you know, like a car, if this is your only transportation and you're just running this thing, you know, an hour a day, you might not have problems all year round. But if they sit for a couple weeks, if they sit for a winter, it, it, anytime that ethanol gas sits in your carburetors or tank, you're going to run into problems down the road. And I can absolutely guarantee you that. Guarantee it. And that's why so many of these bikes you see people, you know, all carbs need cleaned or they sputter and spit. It's because people are putting cheap gas in it. Super easy thing to avoid. Don't be cheap. I mean, it's, what, 4 or $5 a gallon? It only holds four gallons or three and a half or whatever in this particular bike. But if you have a carbureted bike, do yourself a huge favor. Use 100% gas. Save yourself the headaches down the road, and you can trust me on that. Um, so I rebuilt the carbs. I've had this thing up to the tail of the Dragon. Handled it like a champ. Um, I've done the Devil's Triangle twice with it, and I live right here, so that's right near there. There, so that was a nice little ride close to home. Um, what else have I done? I put the tank bib on here. Um, I just thought it looked kind of cool. I put that on there, and to be 100% honest, I really don't like the purple too much, but it's in such good shape, it's something I'm not interested in changing anytime soon. But I kind of put this on there to kind of kind of disguise that purple up a little bit. Take some of the focus off of it and try to get as much black on this thing as I can. Um, it's kind of cool. You put your wallet or whatever in here. I think this was like 30 bucks or something. I did put this passenger backrest on here. Um, I didn't even know I had it. The, the person that owned it before me had a box of stuff they gave me with like an extra windshield and stuff. And that just happened to be in there, and I found it one day in there. So I pulled it out and put it on there. Not only is it good for, like, a passenger, but it's a great place to put your helmet when you're at a gas station or running into a store or whatever. Um, I do have the leather hard Viking bags on there. Um, when I was up at the Dragon, I noticed this one was peeling a little bit. And I don't know, it's like this top layer. I don't even know what you want to call that top layer of leather, but it was peeling, so I just went ahead and peeled the whole thing off. And that, like I said in my last video, I only paid like 100 bucks for those bags, so at the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. Um, the only real issues I've had with this bike and have nothing to do with Honda. Um, it's all in the third-party accessories, like these Kiri Aiken pegs. They're like a switchblade style. You pull this down, they flip open. But, you know, they've probably been on here a few years from the last owner, and they they're, they're actually got it. They kind of flip open like that for highway, 
you know, if you want to get on the highway like that. But they flop, and they're kind of kind of junky. Um, but they look cool, so I left them on. This one on the other side wouldn't hold. It kept spinning. The, the Allen bolt in there kept loosening up, so I had my son, who's a welder, put a little tack weld in there, and it held it good. But they look cool, so I'm going to leave them on. Um, this one's missing the little button. Uh, let's see. I got these visors. They were on there when I got it, third party. And they do rattle. Not often. I mean, if you hear rattling coming from the front, I realized it was just this a little bit. And if I pull it straight out, it kind of goes away. So that's aftermarket. And again, uh, that has nothing to do with Honda. But anything Honda has been awesome. Great bike. Such a gentleman. Rides so nice. Um, one thing that I will say, too, if you get one of these... Um, and these bikes would be great for anybody. They're so easy to ride, and it's a relatively small bike. So, um, But they do have a lot of torque. Now, if the roads are a little bit wet, I found this out, uh, regardless of what kind of condition your back tire is in, if you go around a corner and goose it a little too much, it's going to kick out on you. Lots of torque. I think these have like 67 or 69 foot-pounds of torque on a very light bike, so you could lose it very easily. Um... I think that's about it. I think I've covered everything I've done to it. Super nice bike. I baby it. I changed the plugs. Just changed the plugs in it this year. Uh, gear oil. Oil change, obviously. Coolant flush. So I've kind of gone through it. And I do that every year just because it's kind of cheap. So uh, you may as well. Um, I think it went over the Kiriakin blinkers last time that they put which were super cool, and they also put those on the front as well. Um, put the factory exhaust back on, like I said in my last video. I just like it quiet. I'm a little older now, and I just don't like, you know, rattle in the neighborhood first thing in the morning. I mean, it's cool as hell, don't get me wrong, but I don't want to do that to my neighbors. But anyway, start it up, choke off. It's been sitting here all day. Perfect. Such a, such a gorgeous bike. The only thing I would say, my only critique of the bike, other than the color, I mean, if it was another color, it'd be cooler, but um, it's a little boring. I mean, it's so perfect. It has really not much character. Riding it, it just rides so smooth. It doesn't rattle you. It's like riding a, you know, almost like a Goldwing. Not really, but it's kind of like that. Super smooth, very enjoyable. Um, but it doesn't have much character, in my opinion. I mean, you may disagree. I mean, like some of the Yamahas I had, I had a couple V-Stars. I had an Intruder 1500, a Sportster. They all had a little something about them. They gave them a little bit of personality. Um, and this bike just doesn't. It's just very vanilla. It's a, that's a good word. It's a vanilla cruiser. What you see is what you get. Solid as a rock. It's a Honda. You're going to have it many, many years, and I'll probably keep this one for a long time. It's a great commuter um, until I get a bagger down the road again. But So I think that's about it. Um, like and subscribe. It's kind of a video journal I'm doing of my ownership of the, the Shadow Saber. I've never done it with any of my other bikes. Figured if anybody was in the market for one of these, maybe they could watch this video have any questions you can put it in the comments but uh pretty straightforward bike super nice recommend one to anybody you're not gonna have any issues other than the carburetor and put good gas in it other than that if you put 100 percent gas in you're gonna be in good shape forever bulletproof all right guys thanks for watching